I can almost bet you've never heard of this must-try Japanese restaurant in Sydney. Basuto Omakase literally translates to best omakase, and spoiler alert, I think it lives up to its name. It is in my opinion one of, if not the best omakase experiences I've had in Sydney. In fact, I'm not the only one who thinks so. Google best omakase in Sydney and Basuto Omakase will pop up on the first page of your search as one of the highest rated omakase venues in Sydney. And that's saying a lot, the omakase scene in Sydney is in my personal opinion highly competitive. By the way, I'm Steve from The Fat Life Project and my channel is all about showing you new things to see, eat and do one city at a time. So if that sounds like something you'd enjoy, or why not subscribe so that we can go on more fun adventures together. Now if you've clicked on this video, you're either omakase curious and want to know more about this Japanese form of dining. Like for instance, did you know that omakase is not a centuries old tradition and was really only popularized in the 1990s? Or perhaps you're a seasoned omakase lover who just wants to know if Basuto is worth visiting. Well, in this video, I will do my best to answer both. So if that sounds good to you, then just grab yourself a coffee or a beer or a sake, sit back, relax, and let me take you on a little omakase adventure. If you're like me, you most probably know two things about omakase. One, it is a traditional Japanese dining experience and two, with its often limited seatings and thus bookings, it is also seen as quite an exclusive experience. Well, you and I would both be wrong. First of all, contrary to popular belief, omakase dining was really only popularized in the 1990s. You see, prior to the 90s, sushi restaurants had a somewhat high barrier to entry. It is expensive and reserved for food lovers who really understood the intricate art of sushi making. However, Japan's bubble economy from 1986 to 1991 brought many newcomers curious to try out high-end sushi restaurants. They now had the money to try out what was previously unaffordable for them but really had no idea where to start or what to look for. Hence the birth of the term omakase which means that the customer leaves the details of an order to the chef. The customer doesn't have to research, think and decide, they also don't have to potentially embarrass themselves by ordering the wrong thing while still getting the best dining experience that a sushi restaurant has to offer as their orders are decided by the one person who knows best, thus making exclusive sushi restaurants now more accessible to a wider audience. Side trivia, the term omakase also extends to non-food items such as wine, cocktails and even hair and clothes. The restaurant is located along Loftus Lane. You enter into a small, super colorful entrance and go up to the dining level via a small manually operated lift before entering a peaceful zen garden-like doorway into a beautiful restaurant space that honestly feel like I wasn't in Sydney for a hot second. Hot tip, you always want to ask the chef if it's okay to film them beforehand as it's only polite. We were then guided to our seats to begin indulging in an 18 course omakase meal which cost $195. You can also get the full wine or sake pairings for an additional $120 or $155 respectively, but I was happy to just stick to the food with one extra order of sake on the side. I know you might think $195 sounds like a lot of money to pay, but I honestly thought it was such good value given the amount of food we got. Speaking of which, let me show you everything we ate. Our first dish was this oyster with yuzu jelly. I know, it sounds like such a weird combination, but it worked so well. By the way, yuzu is going to be a recurring theme in today's menu. Next up, we were served some scallops, prawns, cucumbers, and some fish roe. The seafood was so darn fresh, and the finish stuffed the dish with a tangy sauce that left you wanting more. We were then served a sashimi platter with fresh salmon and kingfish. But I have to say that this chawan mushi with crab meat, roe and uni is my freaking favourite so far. You can tell by the fifth dish that the flavour profiles was changing slightly. We went from fresh raw seafood to this huge scallop lightly cooked in a warm broth. This was then followed by this abalone with sushi rice and a thickened abalone sauce over the top. Honestly, so darn good. I've had this next dish at many notable Japanese restaurants, so naturally my anticipation was sky high. I am not kidding when I say this miso marinated black cod was so well done. I savoured each piece because I didn't want it to end. 
Speaking of not wanting it to end, those who know me will know I like my Wagyu and I am officially declaring this as one of the best pieces of Wagyu I've ever had. My only complaint would be that the serving needed to be bigger. I need more of this. But all good things must come to an end and it was now time for the sushi portion of the menu. We started with a tuna aburi which reminded me of the tuna aburis I was obsessed with at the Tsukiji markets in Tokyo. This was then followed by a sayuri, salmon, prawn and cod sushis. We then had a little break from the sushis with this delicious bowl of sake steamed clams. But we were still not done. They then served this with this tuna uni rice roll wrap. I freaking love uni so this was a winner. Before following it with a piece of unagi sushi and tamago pieces. For dessert, we were served a rather unique sake ice cream. It was a light and refreshing way to finish off what was an amazing meal. As you can see from the dishes above, the chef doesn't just serve you food, they take you on a culinary journey. We went from fresh unadulted seafood to more intense cooked dishes to a selection of traditional sushi pieces before finishing off with a light palate cleanser. I mean, I can find no fault with this venue and my only wish is that I found it sooner. I highly recommend it whether it's your first time or if you're a seasoned omakase goer. For the price and what you're getting, totally worth it. Another thing you should know is that a venue's omakase menu is ever-changing, so don't expect the same identical menu when you do visit Besuto. I've included the booking link in my description box just in case this video has convinced you to visit Besuto Omakase. But before you go, if you found this video helpful, informative, entertaining in any way, shape or form and want to see more of me in your feed, I would really appreciate a like and subscribe as it really helps my tiny little channel out. I also upload every weekend, so be sure to also turn on that bell notification so that you can be notified the moment new content goes up. I also have plenty of other Sydney-based content in the playlist that will appear at the end of this video and also over on my Instagram and TikTok. As always, I hope you have a fantastic day ahead or you've had a fantastic day depending on when you watch this and I will see you soon in the next video.